Welcome to Ham Radio License class for the technical level Ham Radio License. We'll be using the Gordon West 2018 to 2022 FCC Element 2 book. In this video, we're going to be covering section one about Ham Radio. Section one in the Gordon West book runs from pages 33 through 36 and consists of nine questions. My name is Rodney Biddle. My call sign is KX4HD. I am an ARRL instructor, an amateur extra, and a testing VE with the ARRL. Through this course, we're going to be recommending the Gordon West 2018 through 2022 technician class book. Make sure you do not get a prior version of the book. The book is an excellent question-based study guide. Questions and answers covered together with brief explanations of the answers. The book is available on Amazon for about $23. In addition to the book, there are several online sites you can go to to run through practice questions and practice tests. HamRadioLicenseExam.com charges about $25 for six months, but they keep a history and tracking of your progress. In addition, we're going to be using a site that I developed, KX4HD.com. It's a free site. It has the questions in both original groupings as they come from the NCVEC, I think it is, uh, can tell you for sure in a moment, or the Gordon West groupings. And there are other additional good practice websites, hamexam.org, hamstudy.org, and eham.net. And why do we use the Gordon West book for our recommended study book? This book groups the questions by general topics into 20 separate groups. Questions in each of the 20 groups are pulled from the larger NCVEC published list of questions, which breaks the 423 questions into 10 primary groups made up of 31 smaller groups of questions. In our video reviews, we will follow the Gordon West order of questions and strongly recommend the purchase of the book for convenient review and study. Alternatively, the ARRL, the ARRL also produces a study book which is larger and covers ham radio theory in greater depth, but it lacks the specific question to answer focus of the Gordon West book. Both books are excellent books, but the Gordon West book lends itself better to repetitive study and memorization through, or though the ARRL book does work better for a deeper understanding of each question and deeper theory. Now onto our practice tests. The next screens that we're going to be reviewing are straight out of www.kx4hd.com, which you should be able to access. If you're going to it with Chrome, it may prompt you for a login ID and password. If that's the case, please use another browser and you'll be able to access it fine. This is the homepage for www.kx4hd.com. When you come here, the questions can be viewed in one of two orders, the NCVEC track or the Gordon West track. We're going to be following the Gordon West track, but let me show you the other track very briefly. The original questions come in 10 sections. The sections are notated by T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, all the way to T0. Each section is broken down into multiple subgroups. There are a total of 31 subgroups within the 10 sections. Clicking on KX4HD Ham Radio, I'm going to go back to the main page and we'll go into the Gordon West track. This is the track that we will be following throughout this course. Gordon West breaks it down to 20 different groups. And we're gonna be 
we're going to be starting in section one about ham radio. Okay, question one. Which agency regulates and enforces the rules for the amateur radio service in the United States? Each question will have four answers. The verbiage on the answer is exactly what the verbiage will be on the test. The verbiage of the question will be exactly what it is on the test. The difference, however, is that the order of the answers will not be the same. So if you go to T1 AO2, and for instance, you think that the answer is D, don't try and memorize a relationship that T1 AO2 is D, it's not. It will be A, B, C, or D, the answers will rotate. So in this case, the four answers we've got are FEMA, Homeland Security, EFCC, or all of these choices are correct. When you're looking at the screen, over here to the left in the gray bar, tells you exactly the page in the Gordon West book that this question is on. On the right side of that bar, tells you the exact page in the ARRL book that the answer can be found. Return to the top will always take you out of the section back to the main track. Or we can show the answer, which is what we will do, and continue. The answer to this is the FCC. Now I'm going to click on explain the answer. And here's our explanation. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission is responsible for all amateur radio rules in the United States and also enforces the rules. Internationally, the ITU serves the role of coordinating ham radio use among all participating countries, but the FCC is the authority within the United States. The FCC is the only appropriate answer. FEMA is a federal emergency management agency, which is an agency of the Department of Homeland Security known for emergency responses, such as hurricane relief, earthquakes, or even volcano disaster. Homeland Security is responsible for securing the United States from threats, both foreign and domestic. Now, we're going to go ahead and continue on to the next question, T1A01. Now notice, we are on question T1A02. The next question is T1A01. So it's actually going backwards in the pool order, but this is the order that the Gordon West books follow. Okay, the next question, which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service as stated in the FCC rules and regulations? We have four answers. Providing personal radio communications for as many citizens as possible. Providing communications for international nonprofit organizations. Advancing skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Or all of these choices are correct. Our answer is advancing the technical, advancing the skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. So radio is considered an art form. And if we look at our explanation, the amateur radio service provides a limited range of frequencies made available to licensed amateurs to use as part of an education process in learning radio communication skills as well as for hobby use for non-business use. Under the rules of the FCC 97.1, a licensed amateur must follow the regulations of using radio for non-professional purposes and for the purposes of gaining skills and learning the art of radio communications. It is assumed that through the use of these frequencies, ham operators will improve their skills and familiarity with amateur radio. Ham radio is for the advancing of the skill for non-commercial purposes. The skills you will develop are useful, developing new communication skills and new understanding of electronic principles. 
Next question, we're going on to question T101 on page 34. For which license classes are new licenses currently available from the FCC? Our answers are novice, technician, general or advanced, technician, technician plus, general or advanced, novice, technician plus, general or advanced, or technician, general or amateur extra. And our answer is technician, general, or amateur extra. Today, the FCC offers just three levels of amateur license levels, technician, general, and amateur extra. In previous years, other available levels were novice, which used to be the entry level, and advanced, which used to fall between general and amateur extra. Today, these are now rolled into the three current levels However, operators with these prior levels still exist and still may have the same restrictions as when the licenses were given. Now, a couple things to remember with this particular question. First of all, remember there are only three levels. All of the other answers have four levels on them. The second thing to remember is that the levels they list are listed in order by which you can obtain the licenses. So the first is technician. If I go back to our available answers, there are only two answers that start with technician. So remember that the answer is technician as this first entry, and that there are only three. Okay. Next question is T1C10 on page 34. How soon after passing the examination for your first amateur radio license may you obtain a transmitter, I'm sorry, may you operate a transmitter on an amateur radio service frequency? So how soon after passing the test can you start to transmit? Our answers are immediately, 30 days after the test date, as soon as your operator station license grant appears in the SEC's license database, or you must wait until you receive your license in the mail from the FCC. We show our answer. The answer is C, as soon as your operator station license grant appears in the FCC's database. Once your license appears in the FCC database, Available for review online, you can begin communicating on the frequencies allowed by your license level. This process usually takes one to two weeks. Later, when upgrading to a general or extra level license, you will have to wait for the database update. I'm sorry, you will not have to wait for the database update. Instead, you will be able to broadcast immediately after testing, but you must identify yourself as pending general or AE license. So as soon as you're in the database, you're good to go. If you are a general or AE, there is a parameter you can give when you're using your call sign that tells folks that you are a pending, you're pending getting your license in the database, but you're valid to operate. Next question is T1A05. What is proof of possession of an FCC issued operator primary license grant? The four answers are a printed operator slash primary station license issued by the FCC must be displayed at the transmitter site. The control operator must have an operator slash primary station license in his or her possession when in control of a transmitter, the control operator's operator slash primary station license must appear in the FCC ULS consolidated licensee database, or all of these choices are correct. And if we show our answer, is a, the answer is the control operator's 
operator slash primary station license must appear in the FCC consolidated licensee database. Okay, today you no longer have to wait for your license in physical form. As soon as your name appears in the FCC database, you're good to go. In days of past, the FCC did use to send a license by mail. You will now receive an email confirming your license with a link to a downloadable version of your license for printing. You should print a copy and carry it with you for proof of license. Next question is T1A04. We're on page 35 of the book. How many operator slash primary station licensee license grants may be held by any one person? So this is asking you how many license grants can one person have? And the answers are one, no more than two, one for each band on which the person plans to operate, or one for each permanent station location from which the person plans to operate. And our answer is one. An amateur radio license consists of both an operator license and a station license. For licenses such as for broadcast station, the operator license allows one to operate the station equipment while the station allows the station allows you to have an amateur station. The combined license is an operator slash primary station license. You will only have one license assigned to you. As you upgrade from technician to general, your license call sign will remain the same. Also, when updating to amateur and extra, that's a typo. When upgrading to amateur extra, your call sign will remain the same, but at that point, you may request a shorter call sign unique only to amateur extra license holders. At any point, you may request, at any point, you may request what's licensed a vanity call sign following the FCC rules and structure for vanity call signs, assuming the call sign you requested is available. Next question, T1C08. We're now on page 35 of the Gordon West book. Okay, the question is, what is the normal term for an FCC issued primary station slash operator image radio license grant? The answers are five years, life, 10 years, or 20 years. And our answer is 10 years. The license term for your license is 10 years at time of <laughs> the license term for your license is 10 years. At time of renewal, there's no need to retake your exam. If your license expires, there's a grace period for which you can obtain your license. However, after that grace period, you will be required to retest. You can renew your license starting 90 days before your license expires without the need to retest. You can also fill out an FCC form 605 and mail it to the FCC. Once your license expires, you must, by rules, stop transmitting. So you are not allowed to transmit with an expired license. Next question is T1C09. What is the grace period following the expiration of an amateur license within which the license may be renewed? Two years, three years, five years, or 10 years? And our answer is two years. Remember, this is the smallest number answer for you. So the grace period Two years is a long grace period, but it's also the, the shortest grace period option of your options. 
After expiration of your license, you will have up to two years to renew. After the two years expires, you will be required to retest to obtain your license. Next question is T1C11. If your license has expired and is still within the allowable grace period, may you continue to operate a transmitter on amateur radio service frequencies? Our options are no. Transmitting is not allowed until the FCC license database shows that the license has been renewed. Yes, but only if you identify using the suffix GP. Yes, but only during authorized nets. Or yes, for up to two years. Our answer is no. Transmitting is not allowed until the FCC license database shows that the license has been renewed. Cancellation of your license can occur if you do not renew it at the 10 year period. More importantly, if you move and you do not update your address with the FCC, then, it, then any return mail to the FCC, such as renewal notifications may also trigger a cancellation of your license. You are required to keep your address up to date with the FCC. That's the end of section one, and that's the end of this recording. The next recording will be for section two, call signs. Thank you for joining.